Hi, I'm Nigel and this is a special birthday edition of Nigel Goes to Space. I'm celebrating somebody who's 25 years old, but the birthday boy can't be here in person because it's 500 kilometres up in space. I'm talking about the Hubble Space Telescope, that amazing machine which has been taking fantastic pictures of the universe for the last two and a half decades. The famous telescope is named after one of the great astronomers of the 20th century, Edwin Hubble. Here he is with his cat Copernicus, his constant companion. And what Hubble did was to look out into the depths of space. He discovered that galaxies are separate from our own Milky Way. They lie millions of light years away. And he found the universe is expanding, the first evidence that everything began in a Big Bang. Back in its early days, Hubble made history when it took pictures of the giant planet Jupiter being hit by a wayward comet called Shoemaker-Levy 9. It broke into 21 fragments and they went wham, wham, wham into Jupiter, each leaving a big black eye on the planet as large as the Earth. Until then, we really didn't know what damage impacting comets and asteroids could make on a planet. And that picture of Jupiter is iconic in making us realise how vulnerable our own Earth is to comets and asteroids coming in from space. Perhaps the most iconic picture from Hubble is the pillars of creation. These are vast, towering clouds of gas and dust in space, silhouetted against a bright nebula behind. And as the name suggests, this is where creation is happening. Inside those columns, stars and planets like our sun and our solar system are being born, even as we watch. I must admit for myself, although the pillars of creation is a fantastic image, I actually prefer the Mystic Mountain is another region where stars are being born. And here you can see a great cone of dark material stretching upwards from top to bottom of this picture. It's a huge area. It's as far as it is from the sun to the nearest star. And at the top you can see those weird things sticking out. They look to me like an alien with antennae sticking out of the head. And what has happened is at the top of the Mystic Mountain, a star has been born inside that nebula. Um, it's got a disk of gas and dust whirling around, 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 around forming new planets and it's shooting out jets of material to either side like that and that's what we're seeing streaming out of the Mystic Mountain. It's not only the birth of stars that Hubble has been looking at, it's the death of stars too. And there's an image of a nebula called the Cat's Eye. And this is a star, it was like our sun at one time, but it's reached the end of its life. And about a thousand years ago, it started puffing out its gases into space, forming the most fantastic convoluted structures. And one day our own star will die like that. The sun will puff over its outer layers and they will rip past our planet Earth. So it's the end of life on our planet, but it's gonna be a beautiful cosmic spectacle for anybody out there watching. And here's another star that's died. This was a biggie, a star much heavier than the sun. And it didn't just fizzle out, it exploded as a supernova. About a thousand years ago in 1054, the Chinese saw a star explode in the sky. And if you look in that place today, as Hubble has done, you see the Crab Nebula. That's the guts of the old star that had been spewed out into space by the explosion. And in the center, there's a weird object called a pulsar, which is the collapsed core of the original star spinning around and emitting pulses or flashes of light 30 times every second. Edwin Hubble himself was looking beyond our Milky Way to other galaxies, millions of light years away. And the Hubble Space Telescope is following in his footsteps. It's looking at other galaxies, some are like our own Milky Way, giant star cities just gently rotating, looking just very beautiful, but doing nothing in particular. But some look really weird. This is ARP 142 named after an astronomer called Chip Arp, who put lots of these interacting galaxies into a catalogue. And the Hubble Space Telescope is showing what's going on. The galaxy at the top, some people say it looks like a bird. To me, it looks like a dolphin leaping up, is falling under the influence of the gravity of the galaxy below and being ripped to shreds. And Hubble has looked way out into space beyond the reach of any other telescope. It's stared for literally days at a time and is picking up the very faintest and the most distant galaxies that have ever been seen. Now what's happening here is that these distant galaxies aren't just a long way away in space. Their light has been travelling towards us for billions of years. So we're seeing these galaxies not as they are now, 
but as they were when the universe was very, very young. So we're seeing baby galaxies, which were born less than a billion years after the Big Bang, the very first galaxies in the entire universe. So it's telling us how galaxies like our Milky Way started out. So Hubble is also a time machine. It's revealing the history of the cosmos as well as sending us beautiful pictures of its geography. After its 25 years in space, the Hubble is still going strong. It's going to carry on, we hope, for many years to come to inspire and enthuse all of us. And in a few years' time, it's going to be joined by its bigger brother, the James Webb Space Telescope, which is able to look even further out into space. Those are some of my favourite Hubble pictures, but what about you? What are your favourite images from space? Please let me know in the comments below, and if you like Hubble, you can subscribe to them on the Hubble Space Telescope. And of course, please subscribe to Naked Science for more Nigel Goes to Space.